Hello everyone, it's Miss Angela from the Fort Worth Public Library, and I am excited to be partnering today with the Fort Worth Nature Center to talk about alligators. First, I have a song for you, and it's a very silly song, and it's just pretend. It's not about real alligators at all, so you'll have to wait and let Mr. Michael from the Nature Center tell you the real facts about alligators. Okay, I'm going to leave space for you to repeat after me. So. I'm gonna sound quiet, but I want you to be singing the alligator song after me. It's pretty easy. Ready? Okay. Alligator. Alligator. The alligator is my friend. He lives up in the sky. And if you want to see my friend, you can find him in my eye. Alligator, alligator, the alligator is my friend, he lives under my bed, and if you want to see my friend, you can find him on my head. Alligator. Alligator. The alligator is my friend. He lives under a tree. And if you want to see my friend, you can find him on my knee. So that song is great for practicing rhymes. So you could do a couple more. You could do, he lives out with the deer. And you could find him in your what rhymes with deer? Or you can find him under a boulder, on your shoulder. So you can play around with that one, make up some rhymes that work for you. Okay, uh, hearing and identifying rhyming words is a great pre-reading skill, so it's great for preschoolers to be practicing. I'm going to tell you now a story about an alligator and it's called Why Alligator Hates Dog. This is a Cajun folktale from Louisiana. In the swamps and the bayous, there's one creature that everybody fears. He may look just like a log, but all the other animals give him lots of space and plenty of respect on account of his big, sharp teeth and his powerfully strong tail. I bet you know who I'm talking about. That's right, it's Mr. Alligator. Like I said, all the other animals were scared of Mr. Alligator, except one, Dog. Dog lived with her owners on the edge of the bayou, and she wasn't scared of Mr. Alligator, not one bit. Dog would stand on her porch and she would say, oh, oh, come and get me, Mr. Alligator. But Mr. Alligator knew that Dog lived with people and he was afraid of people. He listened to Dog and he smacked his jaws, but he couldn't do anything except hope that one day Dog would come. Dog would come close enough for Mr. Alligator to snap her right up. Now one day, Dog was chasing rabbits. Thumpity, 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 thump, and forgot to look where she was going. Rabbit led her right to Mr. Alligator. Dog knew she was in trouble, and she did some fast talking. Why, hello there, Mr. Alligator, and how might you be this fine day? At last, you come close, said Mr. Alligator. You're always teasing, saying, come and get you. And now I'm going to snap you right up. Dog whined. Oh, come on, Mr. Alligator. I was only trying to be friendly. I didn't say come and get me. I said come and get it. Every night my masters give me all sorts of delicious scraps to eat. And I thought you would want to share it with me. But what about your people? Asked Mr. Alligator. Don't worry, said Dog. I'll keep watch. Now, Mr. Alligator was so hungry that he could only think with his stomach and not with his head. 
So that very evening, he crawled up to Dog's house for scraps. Dog met Alligator on the steps. Alligator said, are you sure your people are gone? Dog said, do you see my people? Do you hear my people? Do you smell my people? Alligator turned his head. He didn't see any people. He didn't hear any people. And all he could smell were those delicious scraps. So he followed Dog up the steps to the porch. He plopped down in front of that bowl, and just as he began to open his mouth, what do you think happened? Dog barked! Oh, come quick, come quick! Dog's people came out in a hurry. They saw the gator, and quick as he liked, Daddy grabbed a broom, and Mama grabbed a, bro a mop, and they whacked that gator on his head and his tail. Ouch, 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 aye, cried Mr. Alligator. He ran away as fast as he could and never went back to that house again. The end. Now I'm going to pass it over to Mr. Michael from the Nature Center so you can learn some real facts about alligators. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Perez. I'm with the Fort Worth Nature Center and Refuge. I want to thank you for joining in to this presentation on the American Alligator. I would also like to extend an appreciation and a thank you to the Fort Worth Public Library for sharing that story with uh, their audience and our audience as well. We appreciate your partnership and look forward to uh, future programming uh, we can work together on. Now I want to transition and talk a little bit about the American Alligator. Now I'm going to touch on a couple of things. Number one, we're going to talk about reptiles in general and how Alligators fit that group. Uh, second, we'll talk about adaptations. These are behavior or physical traits that allows an animal to survive in its environment. Uh, third, we're going to talk a little bit about the importance of the alligator uh, in the river that's uh, behind me, which is the West Fork of the Trinity River. And lastly, we'll co cover some fun facts and answer some questions uh, that I tend to get or get asked when we're doing programs uh, about alligators. So as I said, uh, we're going to talk about those four things. Now before we do that, uh, I do have the alligator here. There's one thing about this alligator that you may be looking at and wonder, why does it have that black thing around its mouth? And I want to answer that before we continue on with this presentation. As I said last week when we talked about skunks, we actually have permits that allow us to have animals that we use for educational purposes. Much like your parents who have licenses to drive and your teachers have license and certificates to teach, well, we have these permits that allow us to keep these animals uh, for strictly educational purposes. These are not pets. You do not want one for a pet, nor can you have one as a pet. However, we do have the uh, permit that allows us to do that, and that's been uh, issued by the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. So one of the, the things that we have to follow, one of the rules that we have to follow, just like your, your teachers and your, uh, when they teach, they have, they have rules and things that they have to follow in order to keep up with that uh, license and certificate to teach. And your, your parents have rules when it comes to driving in order to maintain that license. Well, we have rules too uh, to keep these uh, uh, animals. And one of the rules uh, when it comes to alligators is we have been asked that we have to uh, secure their their mouth so that when we're in the public and we're showing this animal close up uh, that lessens the chance that this alligator may bite a finger so forth with that being said typically when we do an animal presentation where we have alligators and there's an audience in front of me I typically have him looking at me and everybody can see the tail just as a layer of uh, security so that's why there's a black piece uh, of tape wrapped around his mouth Again, is for us to follow the rules that have been issued to us in order for us to maintain those license because a permit to have that permit, so that we can have these animals and show them to you uh, when you come and visit us or when we come visit you to make that connection between uh, what we're focusing and what we're discussing and in the animals. So you can uh, focus and uh, make that connection and gain a, a better appreciation. So. Long story short, that's why we have the tape around his mouth. So I don't want you to be alarmed. He can still breathe. He can still see. So I just want to get that out of the way. So American alligators, they are considered reptiles. Uh, reptiles 
are a special group of animals that have certain characteristics. And some of those characteristics are shared from uh, other animal groups like birds and so forth. But some of the characteristics and the char characteristics that uh, allow them to be considered reptiles are a couple of things. Number one, they have dry scaly skin. You can kind of see that bumpy, bumpy skin. Uh, those are called scales. And these scales are very important for uh, reptiles such as alligators, turtles, snakes, lizards, and animals like that because they can live in areas that are dry and not have a lot of moisture. So these scales kind of stay intact, they stay closer to get together, so they do not release any of that moisture or lose that moisture. It stays in their body, so that's an important feature of these scales. Also, uh, if you look close enough, it's kind of hard to see here, but they have very bumpy skin, especially at the top, and that helps protect its, its, its insides, like backbone and so forth. Uh, actually, the scales on its belly are relatively smooth, so this allows this alligator to sit on the bank of river and slide into the water uh, when necessary. So it's covered in scales. Number two, this animal, reptiles, are cold-blooded. And that basically means it cannot change its body temperature on its own. Now you and I are warm-blooded, which means we can regulate our body temperature. As we get hot, body temperature rises and we start to sweat. And that's a way to cool us off. And vice versa, if we get cold, we start to shiver and shake. It's our body's way of warming us up. Well, alligators and reptiles don't have that ability. So what they do is they rely on their environment. If this alligator gets too hot, he'll jump in the water and swim. Uh, other reptiles will burrow themselves underground because it's cooler underground uh, or just get in some shade. And the opposite is that when they get really cold, well, they'll come out of the water, sit on the log uh, under the sun or on the bank under the sun and warm up. So they're covered in scales. They are cold-blooded. Another cool thing about uh, alligators is they lay eggs, much like birds do. However, their eggs have a nice leathery shell around them, uh, outer layer. Uh, so they absorb the impact when the mother is uh, depositing her eggs. So uh, a reptile uh, includes alligators, snakes, turtles, and lizards, and they have those three, uh, well, at least those three characteristics that we want to focus on, uh, having scales, laying eggs, and being cold-blooded. So let's now talk about uh, some of uh, it's, well, actually let's talk about, yeah, is adaptations. Now adaptation is a physical trait or behavior that allows an animal to survive in its environment. Well, as you look behind me, it is, there, we do have the West Fork of the Trinity River that comes through the nature center. And this is where the alligators live. Now in order to live in an aquatic environment or to, along the river, you have to have a couple of adaptations. So number one, look at that tail. Basically, half, half of his body's tail, and then the rest is his legs and body and his head and so forth. This tail here is very important because it allows it to swim. He can, brrrr, he can swim with it. He can defend himself and slap things with it. But also, he stores a lot of fat uh, from uh, the food that he, he consumes. So that can be very beneficial, especially in the winter months when he's not eating very much. So a long tail. Also, try to do the best we can. You can see those webbed feet. He has some webbed feet. Uh, there's, toe, there's skin between those toes that let him to help paddle and swim better as well. And then another cool adaptation about uh, this alligator is the ability to have his eyes and his nose on top of his head. Now, as I said, he's got his eyes closed. He's, he's not going to open his eyes right now. Uh, he can. And also you can see his nose as well. You can see his nose. There he goes. He's just opening his eyes to see you. So they sit on top of his head, which is a really cool advantage because he can bury himself underwater and still be able to see. So that's a pretty cool adaptation. In addition to the ability to see, he has three eyelids. He has two that go up and down, or one that goes up, one that goes down like you and me. Then he has a clear one that goes side to side. It's called a nictitating membrane. It's clear. It's much like you, you kids, when you go swimming. You go underwater, you want to see underwater. So what do you wear? That's right, goggles. So he has built-in goggles to help, help him to see. In addition to those adaptations, if you look on his lower jaw, I'm not going to point, but he has a, there's a bunch of little black specks on his lower jaw. All those little black specks uh, are called sensory, they have sensory pits, they're sensory pits. So it allows him to sense. So as he's sitting in the water and a wave comes, say a turtle, which is one of the uh, animals he likes to eat, jumps in the water, creates the ripple in the wave and hits these little sensory pits, he kind of perks up and like, whoa. There's some food, it's dinner time. Then he can swim to it and uh, if he can catch it, then 
There's his lunch or his dinner. So all these things here are adaptations that allow this animal to survive. Uh, and that's just overall uh, alligators. There are other things that this animal can do to help him survive, but we want to focus on those. And perhaps during this broadcast, uh, you have questions, you can share those questions in our uh, comment section, and we'll be happy to answer those for you if we don't cover what you wanted us to cover. So we talked about what a reptile is, covered in scales, cold-blooded, lays eggs. We talked about members of the reptile, uh, the order, the, the reptilians, that is lizards, alligators, snakes, turtles, and things like that. We talked about adaptations, those physical traits like web feet, long tail, um, and also behavior that helps an animal survive in its environment. Now I want to transition and talk about why these animals are so important. Now alligators do get a bad rep. You know, people think of alligators and they get scared. Uh, they get, they're fearful of them. Now there's some others that, like myself, appreciate them and understand them and uh, learned about them and all those uh, fears that may have once existed are gone because I understand them a little bit better. And that's part of our fears is we don't necessarily understand them or know much about them. Uh, so alligators are, are important to our environments. They're important to us. Right behind us is a uh, West Fork of the Trinity River. That's a river that we here in Fort Worth, uh, we depend on. So alligators play an important role in that because they help uh, maintain a healthy uh, river system. And they do that by being the top predator. They're the top predator in this environment. They consume fish, they consume aquatic birds, uh, turtles, and those types of animals and small mammals. And by consuming them and keeping them at a healthy number, it prevents those particular animals being so, so many in number to deplete the natural resources such as the water and the food. So the alligator keeps everything in check. Uh, think about a, a, jig, a Jenga puzzle. Maybe you perhaps you like to play Jenga. You stack up all the Jenga and you start taking one piece at a time away. And you may take one or two away and if you're really good, more than that, and it doesn't fall. Puzzle still builds and builds and builds and improves and gets better. But eventually, if you pull too many, that Jenga tower is going to fall down. And that's the same thing about animals. Uh, they play an important role. They keep a nice balance. But if we start affecting them, uh, directly and uh, their numbers fall down especially the top predators and even uh, the fish and everything at the bottom of the food web it's gonna cause a, a negative effect to that system to that river so that's why alligators are important and despite their uh, people being afraid of them um, we have to get past that and understand how helpful they are for us uh, I paddle out here all the time uh, we have staff to paddle out here and none of these alligators have shown any signs of aggression towards us. And the reason for that is we don't feed them. Their food's in the water. They can take care of themselves. So once we start feeding, and that's true about wildlife. If you start feeding wildlife, they get used to you. And that fear that they may have had, uh, they lose that. And then they start approaching you thinking, hey, that guy has food. I'm going to go get some. And then here comes the alligator coming to you to get the food. And then you're thinking, ah, he's going to hurt me. But in reality, he's looking for food because someone has already started that process for him. So uh, I discourage any, any of you feeding any wild animals. And that includes going to the ponds and feeding ducks. Uh, that's, we don't want them to get used to us. So uh, it's a PSA on feeding wildlife. So that's a little bit about what reptiles are, the, the members of the reptile group. We talked about adaptations, uh, talked about this guy here uh, and his important role in the environment. Now let's just take a few minutes to answer some questions that some people ask that you're probably thinking, yeah, I want to ask that. The number one question that people ask about alligators or any of the animals that we have out when we do a presentation is, drum roll please, uh, is this a boy or a girl? That's always the number one question. And I always answer it, well, it's a boy because I don't see any uh, any bows or earrings or anything like that, right? Um, no. So this alligator here, uh, we don't know. But one of the fascinating things about alligators is once the eggs are, uh, are uh, laid and buried and under a nest, the temperature of that nest while they're being incubated plays a role in whether or not they're going to be male or female, boys or girls. Most time, 
uh, when the temperature is a little warm or warmer, then they're going to be males. And if it's going to be still warm but not as warm, uh, they'll be females. So uh, the, the temperature of that nest actually determines whether or not uh, males or females are going to emerge. So I think that's very fascinating information with them. Uh, they have lots and lots of teeth. Uh, in fact, they're, they're, they lose their teeth. They'll grow, they'll grow more teeth. Um, obviously, that slows down a little bit with age, but uh, uh, that's a cool, fascinating question. Uh, well, a question that people ask, you know, about their teeth. You know, they see that, and uh, so that that's pretty cool. Um, some people ask, you know, do we have alligators here in, in Fort Worth? And the answer is yes, we do. Uh, here in the Trinity River, we have alligators here at the Nature Center. Uh, they've been documented in several bodies of water in our area, so this is a great place for them. And they like being here in the fourth area for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's hot in the summer. They like the heat. Bring the heat. They can handle it. There's lots of water. Number two, there's lots of water around here for them. And three, our winters are pretty mild, so they can handle uh, being here in the wintertime. So those are some of the factors that uh, allow them to be here during the summer months or year round for that matter. Uh, this is about as north and west as you're going to find them. There's been cases of some a little out, a little north and west of here, uh, but they can't uh, survive in the winter months as well. They can't here. So those are a couple of questions that people ask us. And I'm sure you have some questions you want to ask us. So feel free in the comments section to ask your question, and one of our naturalists will definitely chime in and answer your question. Uh, so uh, do not be, uh, be embarrassed. Go ahead and ask your questions. Uh, we'd be happy to answer them for you. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end this presentation. Uh, thank you for joining us once again. Hopefully you, you do have questions you ask that you can ask us. And we, again, we're going to be on top of it. We're going to answer your questions. Uh, but until then, I want to say, see you later, alligator. See you later, alligator. <laughs>